There's nothing like a newer song without the words on there when you start, huh? <laughs> How many of you are like me and you figured out the combination is to turn around and look at the sound booth and then all of a sudden the words showed up? Welcome to the building at 1400. I'm looking for the church. You are here, and you look beautiful this morning, church. Um, I'm thankful for those that are joining us in person as well as those that are joining us online. If you are joining us online, or if you're here and you have your phone out, right before you put it away, uh, why don't you just in the comment section put, we are here in, into the Facebook feed. Um, you saw or you heard uh, Kayla's announcement video this morning. Did anybody miss the start of it? Did anybody? <laughs> You know, she's not here today, and that's when she sprung the, uh, the big uh, ring. Um, today, we're going to conclude the message series, Masterpiece in Progress. And she mentioned in the video, we're going to do a two-week um, thankful series. Uh, I'll do the first one next Sunday, and then Kayla will do the one on the 22nd. And then on the 29th, we're actually starting the Christian New Year. How about that? Yeah. Anyway, so we'll beginning Advent, and so that will that will start a. And do you know what the name of this year's series is going to be? The, the Advent, the Christian New Year, uh, and so we'll be walking you through, preparing you for an ultimate Christmas uh, celebration. Uh, a lot of you have shared uh, concerns in the Facebook group and by other means. Uh, how many of you are like me, and you got some unspoken stuff? All right, and here's all that as well. We did have at least one celebration this past week. Um, uh, the sellers have, have uh, received in a healthy young little boy. And uh, if you haven't seen uh, pictures, absolutely beautiful um, little boy. Wouldn't you say, Kathy? He's a ginger. That's, that's why. <laughs> Are you a ginger? <laughs> only her, her and, uh, what is it? Correct. Her, only her and her hairdresser know. Yeah, all right. All right, oh, all right. back to the prayer stuff. <laughs> uh, there are concerns. Um, uh, our nation continues to be uh, divided, you know, and, uh, and, I, and hopefully uh, this time of Thanksgiving as well as the Advent season, it ought to be a time of unity. It ought to be a time of us coming together, recognizing who's really uh, in charge. Amen? Let's go to the, world, uh, to the Lord in prayer. Lord gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. We have seen your mighty work on display. We've seen you bring love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness in so many different situations. And we praise you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for the healings that we've seen. So many times when we thought that things look hopeless, you came through with ultimate hope. Continue to guide us as we face the battles ahead and help us to see that you have provided everything that we need to remain standing at the end. Give us the strength that we need to persevere. Help us to recognize that you truly have created a masterpiece right here in front of us so that your glory might be shown. We're thankful for the opportunity to humble ourselves and kneel before you in prayer. Hear, us our, hear our prayer, O oh Lord, as we continue to pray for our nation, our state, our local community, our families. Continue to, to he, bring about the healings that are, that are needed. No matter what, what shape and form those things take, we're thankful the nurses, doctors, techs, anybody that comes in contact with those that are that are hurting, that are uh, uh, that are sick. The scripture says that if any among us are in need of healing, to call on the elders of the church, Father, I ask that you allow the elders to be able to have their eyes open to see who they are, and also to be able to see who those people are that are in need of healing, so that we might go. Lift them up in prayer. Father, sometimes we feel so isolated because whatever we're going through, we, we, we don't want to share it with other people. So we, we keep it to ourselves and we, we're going through all of these hardships. And we 
feel we feel so alone. We feel alone from you because we don't want to share whatever it is with you. And open our eyes this morning to let us know that you already know those things. So let us bring them to your altar. Also, you provided an absolutely wonderful support group here. Uh, the, the body of Christ, the church, not only gathered in this building, but in buildings all around. Help bring those, those people that, that, we can, that we can trust because of you to be able to share those burdens so that that masterpiece becomes a little bit more clear and more clear uh, with every single day as we understand who we are, we understand whose we are going to take all of those things, all of those plans, the things that we think that we have in our head, and we're going to make certain that they align with what it is that you want. We've tried, and we've tried, and we've tried our way. Father, I ask that through the power of the Holy Spirit this morning, you convince us that there is another way, that there is your way, and it is the only way. We pray these things in the blessed, holy name of Jesus. Amen.
church. Let's hear you. With our hands lifted high. Sounds so beautiful. A little bit louder. In this year. Dwell in the songs that we are singing, rising to the heavens, rising to your heart, your heart, your praises filling up the spaces in between.
may be seated. Um, will you help me and uh, thank the band for all that they do as they're stepping out? One thing I did not mention in um, in the in the announcement portion that I did this morning, our Christmas in the South mugs that we do. Um, we started that up last year, and we've got the mugs, and we sell them. There are a few of them that are out in the lobby. Um, uh, the four years you come in over on the right-hand side are the 2020 mugs, which has a beautiful picture of an image of the canopy lights over downtown Cairo, something that most of us remember from even as a child, you know, going and, and just uh, ooing and ah over that. Well, each one of those mugs, when we sell it, the proceeds and the selves are uh, – the mugs are self-funded. They were already paid for whenever they come in. So the entire proceeds, the fifteen dollars, each all that those proceeds go to the Grady County Foster Parents Association to um, uh, to buy Christmas gifts for the foster children that are that are in care here in Grady County. And so this year we really didn't know how the mugs were going to do. I don't know if you know this or not, but there's a little virus thing going around, and thing you know it's just different. And um, I'll go ahead and tell you that as of right now, those mugs that are sitting out there in the, the uh, foyer, they're about the last ones that are left. Okay? So we've got a reorder uh, uh, working, and, and we'll have them in here in, in time. But if, if you want one, you know, make sure, uh, if you want 12, if you want 24, make sure and go ahead and let us know so that we can, when the next order comes in, that we can make sure that you get yours uh, First, second, whatever, okay? Um, there was a National Geographic article that ran. And it was all about an Alaskan bull moose or the Alaskan bull moose. And um, the male of this, this species, they battle it out. Um, they battle for dominance during the fall breeding season. And it's usually literally a head-to-head -head competition where they come and, uh, and their antlers, that, that rack that's up there, they, they just crush and crash up against one another as they collide. And often those antlers that are there, they'll, they'll break off. And, so, and then they end up losing um, their, only, their only weapon. They, they have no defense, and so they're pretty well out of the game. And um, uh, it, the, the, health, the heftiest moose... It has the largest and strong, strongest antlers. They're the winner. They're the one that are going to come out on, on top. Um, but, but listen, therefore, the battle that rages during that fall season, it's actually won in the spring and in the summer as they're eating continually, as they're eating and trying to get ready. Uh, the one that, that consumes the best diet, uh, for growing the antlers to be strong. That's the one. The one that puts on enough weight to be the heavyweight in those fights that are that are to come. That's the one. The one that, that uh, makes sure that in that, that weaker one, the one that didn't take in, that didn't prepare, that didn't do what it was supposed to do, the, they, they have no chance. They've got the weaker antlers and they've got less bulk. Um, and they need those well-made weapons that they have to be at their uh, disposal. And I think a lesson can be learned from there that spiritual battles in our life, they're coming. Anybody want to get up and walk out? The spiritual battles, they're, 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 they're coming. And Satan chooses when that season shall be to attack. You don't get to choose. Now, you can help him out every now and again. <laughs> but you don't get to choose. He, you know, but, but he picks when it is. Um, and so the question is only, will we, will we be victorious or will we fall whenever that time comes? And much of it depends on what we do now before the war begins. And uh, the whole moose, bull moose principle is enduring faith, strength, and wisdom for trials are best developed before they are needed. Uh, today we're going to conclude this message series, Masterpiece in Progress. And uh, we've been on a nine-week, uh, hopefully you think, well-planned journey through the book of Ephesians. And 
Oh, we've been looking at this this letter, this epistle, this letter that Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote to the believers in Ephesus. And I think those words are extremely important even to us today. We've been looking specifically at how he points out the actions, God's action at work in our lives, both to reconcile us to himself and also to reconcile and restore the relationships that we have with those are around, that are around us. And, of course, the, the title, Masterpiece in Progress, it comes from out of the second chapter, um, the second chapter of Ephesians in the 10th verse. Paul tells us that we are, we are individually and also corporately, we are God's handiwork. We are his, his masterpiece. And I can hardly wait to see how this, the rest of that plan unfolds uh, in today's scripture as well as uh, in our lives going forward. In today's scripture lesson, Paul reveals more about that plan. And we'll be looking at what the Bible says about being prepared with these well-made weapons that God has already provided. He, they're already there. It's not something that you have to, okay, I wonder what he's got. He, he's already told you what, it was, what they are. And Paul does an excellent job of, of talking about these things, these weapons that are provided so that we might be wise and strong. And living in that strength that he provides, that's what allows us to more fully and quicker uh, become that masterpiece that we were uh, designed to be. You ready to hear it? I love the way Paul starts off in the message translation. And that about wraps it up. <laughs> I'm almost out of here, but i got a few more things to say. So it's Ephesians 6, uh, verses 10 through, it goes all the way to the end of, of it, which is 24. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so that you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is, this is no afternoon athletic contest that, you'll walk, that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. A life or death Fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. We did a message series on that, didn't we? Yeah. Um, take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's, when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace. Faith and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in, the ongoing, in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. And don't forget to pray for me. Pray that I'll know what to say and have the courage to say it at the right time. Telling the mystery to one and all. The message that I, jailbird preacher that I am, am responsible for getting out. Tychicus, my good friend here, will tell you what I'm doing and how things are going with me. He is certainly a dependable servant of the master. I've sent him not only to tell you about us, but to cheer you on in your faith. Goodbye, friends. Love mixed with faith be yours from God the Father and the Master, Jesus Christ. Pure grace and nothing but grace be with you, with you, with all who love our Master, Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So Paul, he finishes up this letter to, to the believers there in Ephesus, also a letter to us, by reminding them, reminding us that we have an important role. He describes this battle that's, going, that's at work in the spiritual realm. But he also explains the tools that God has equipped them, equipped us with, uh, to ensure the victory. He points out what most of us should already know, uh, but sometimes we forget, that the war is, there's a war that's raging all around us, and it is not of flesh and blood like we most often think it is, right? We, we, I'm getting two nods. 
that's the thing. When it when it's when it's going on, we're fussing at this one or that one or you know, uh, you know who they are. You're you're fussing at them because that's what we can see. But this is a spiritual battle that we're in, and it's not a temporary battle. He talks about that that weekend contest. I would say like a like a football game. Any anybody? Is it too soon? It's, you know, in that, in that we, you know, we take our licks, right? We, we take our beating, we, we, really bad. We take our beating, we, <laughs> really bad. Early on and it doesn't get any better, you know. But we take, and then we turn around and say, okay, well, we're going to focus on next week, right? Or, you know, wait till next year. That, that's not what it is. Uh, He talks about this being a life or death fight to the finish uh, into eternity type battles. Of course, there he's talking about, you know, any time something happens and we get wounded in that thing and we feel like dropping out, then our case for the kingdom, it falls, it fails, and we're not able to do. And so, therefore, we can't get the word out to others and, you know, hell hell is real. And, And And... and sometimes here, uh, but but he's talking about that that this 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 fight that we're in these battles these storms they're against Satan and his minions. And uh, Paul reminds us that we've been issued what it is that we need to live. And he starts out by telling uh, about these well-made weapons, which is the title of today's message. Um, this passage in the Message translation speaks of them as being truth. Righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation. And I love where he said, these are more than words. You know, they, they, these aren't, you know we, we take it just, okay, well, that's what it is. Well, it's way more than that. Yes, words are powerful, but these aren't just words. They're weapons, each and every one of them. And you're going to need them, ready, throughout your life. It's not just, okay, well, uh, you know, I need it right this second. You need these things all the time. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation. You need those things. But then Paul adds another one to that powerful list of weapons. Not just any weapon. He refers to this weapon as an indispensable weapon. Something that you absolutely got to have. What is it? God's Word, God's Word, the Scripture, it, uh, what, what's contained in the Bible. He says you've got to have it. It's not optional. It's indispensable. Now, uh, I don't know how many of you heard when I read the, this, uh, this passage out of the message uh, the first time. I, if I didn't know what I was reading, I wouldn't know what I was reading. Anybody? All right, so if you go to more of a traditional uh, uh, translation of the Bible, uh, we, it makes a little bit more sense to those of us that study it the old way. See, when the world comes attacking, we need to be full of faith. And we can hold up what a more traditional version of this passage would say, the shield of faith. And that shield yeah, I mean, is a weapon. That shield of faith can fight back the, the fiery darts. It can keep them from coming and hitting us. And then a, a, a more traditional version would say we put on the belt of truth. Knowing what the truth is so that the lies that come at us, you know, Satan tells you you're not worth anything. Uh, but you know what the truth is. You know what the truth is. Or you start thinking, well, maybe I should do this. And if you know, you know the truth and maybe we should do something else. And the reason that we're able to do that is we're to put on the breast pl- breastplate of righteousness. See, and some of us have a problem with that because we know that we are not righteous. But it's not we're not putting on our own righteousness. We're putting on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And we're able to do that because we've accepted that relationship. We've, we've come and said, I can't do this, but I know that you can and you are righteous And so we're able to put on that breastplate of righteousness. And he tells us to put on the helmet of salvation. Once we give our life to him, we're covered. We're we're covered. And so we're not going to take that. um, You know, it's kind of like when uh, I I went riding a motorcycle, you would see me with a helmet on. And then you cross over into Florida, and I don't know what they're thinking. (laughs) You know, but but, I mean, you're going to need that, that helmet that's on there. And, uh, and, and whenever we submit to him, we're, we're, we're covered. 
with the knowledge, with that reassurance. And it's at that point that we're able to put on the shoes of peace. In that shoes of peace, that thing that carries us out of here into the world, that is, we're taking the good news, the shoes of the gospel. A lot, a lot of times it'll be listed that way. And we're able to take that good news into a broken world that needs to know. And all of those are actually considered defensive weapons. Whenever something comes against you, you ought to be able to use all of those things to keep them from coming at you. Make sense? All right. So now, now, in addition to that, Paul adds in this indispensable weapon, the, word, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And that's just the Scripture. It can not only, not only defend us from harm, because we know the truth and we're able to keep from getting harmed, but we can also use it, careful with this word, as an offensive weapon. Weapon, okay, not offensive, but for the use uh, going on offense to further the kingdom if we know what the scripture says. See, we can't go out and use it as a weapon if we don't know what's in there. I think somebody really smart t- put in your next steps when I did it the other day that says if you're not in a Bible study or did you see that, Teresa? Thank you for sharing it. Yeah, uh, if you if you're not in a in a in a Bible study and finding out, or if you're not in a life group, and we'll talk about that one a little bit later on. But but you've got to know what it is so that you can not only defend against against those attacks, but yet you can also use it to go on offense for His purposes. And uh, Paul tells us tells them and tells us that these weapons are wonderful, well made. Weapons uh, with the finest of materials. And that we should do everything that we can so that when all is done except for the shouting, we will be standing. Does, doesn't that... See, see. so after, after we're told to stand, we're told to stand uh, in spite of our weaknesses, in spite of those things, in spite of our mess-ups. Anybody had a mess-up? I should see way more hands here. Yeah. Anybody had a met? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, in the midst of those battles where we have, where we we've uh, had trouble, uh, if we stay standing, if we stay faithful, and if we stand in our faith, we win. See, see. Ultimately, remaining faithful to God is the goal. So, and, 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 you know, wonderfully, he, he says, you know, how about standing back up, you know, get back up. Or we've got somebody else that's in our, our corner that can help. The problem is, ready? It's the secret. We get tempted. Did I blow anybody's mind? Just, uh, um, we only give part because we think that we can handle it. Or we think that we can handle most of it. And, and uh, by ourselves, right? We, we just, all right, well, you know. And so then we find ourselves in a hole, and that's when we're, oh, I need help, you know. And, and, uh, but nobody, nobody is temptation-proof. Even mature Christians have uh, weaknesses in their spiritual armor that make them vulnerable to some sort of wounding attack uh, by the enemy of their souls. Um, our pride can provide the very opening that allows for a sharp penetration of one of Satan's darts to come at us. So can the love of money, a quick temper, a critical tongue, chronic impatience. Anybody want to say ouch yet? Or do you want me to continue? Have I hit one of yours yet? Anybody want to volunteer? No, no. So what is this temptation? Uh, Anything that entices you to do or say, think, say, or do something contrary to God's holy will. That's temptation. Anything that that entices you to think, say, or do anything contradictory, uh, contrary to uh, God's holy will. It might be a weak impulse or it might be a powerful urge. You know, uh, uh, the little things there, you know, that's temptation too. Uh, it is anything that is against what God approves 
or desires in your life. That's what temptation is. Um, uh, the ancient Greeks told a story of the warrior called Achilles. Everybody, anybody heard of Achilles? Um, his mother uh, had been warned that he would die from a wound. And so she went and she dipped him in the river Styx. Um, that was supposed to make him invincible to anything that was going to come against him. And what she did in the picture there, she held him by his heel in order to dip him into the protective waters of the Styx. So guess what? There's one part that was not covered in protection. Um, and so those protective waters weren't there. And it's, it was told that it was through that heel that he received that fatal wound that ultimately killed him. Now, if that was a brand new revelation to you, just raise your hand. It was new to me. Uh, each of us, each of us has to ask, each of us has to ask, what is your Achilles heel? What is it? Uh, we, and we need to know what our weaknesses are, uh, where we can be wounded spiritually. We need to know what that, what that uh, propensity is, what that weakness is, weakness is. Then as we rely on God for help, for his help, will be protected from the fiery darts, those spiritual attacks that, that come our way. And those weak places, those are the places that we need to make certain that we're covered, that we're protected by the well-made well weapons that God has provided. Make sense? After we've made certain that we've been dressed for battle, after we've been made certain that we can remain standing because we've taken care of that. See, we've talked about defense, and we've talked, you know, defense wins games, right? <laughs> but the offense, so we've, after we've talked about defense and we've talked about offense, now we're going to talk about special teams. Um, it, then is the time, then is the time to finish with Paul's, uh, with Paul's outfit of success. And that is when we kneel in prayer. And no, you don't have to get down on your knees and you have to close. As a matter of fact, he says, pray long and hard and keep your eyes open. Especially if you're driving when you're praying. Keep your eyes open. Uh, kneel in prayer. Paul says that prayer is essential. Pray long and hard. Pray for one another. Encourage one another. And then in this passage, I love it because Paul asked for prayer for himself. He asked those believers, those friends of his, to pray for himself that he might have the courage to share the gospel message fearlessly and effectively. He also asked that he might know the right time to share that message with others. And I believe that you should be asking for the same thing. You got to know how to tell it, and you've got well. And after you know how to tell it, then you ought to have the courage to tell it. But you need to know the exact time that you know because the, you know somebody's sitting there and they're going through a struggle. You know you don't want. Well, I tell you what, there's good news. <laughs> you know you got to know when it is that you do that you need to do it, and and then. You know, you, you need to pray, and God absolutely loves to hear the prayers of His people. Uh, the big and the small things, we should be praying for those things. And our prayers make a difference. Our individual and also our corporate prayers, they make a difference. And uh, I, I, I think most of us have heard that, that saying that you're either in a battle, have just come out of a battle, or you're about to go into a battle. Where are you? Yes, yes, yes. Right? You know, I'm in one. I just came out of another one, and I'm about to go into another one. And, um, uh, you know, with those storms, they come. Those attacks, they, they come. And this is a time. This is a time right now when we need to prepare. 
Um, for the bull moose, that battle of fall is one. It's one in the spring. It's bo- it's one in the summer. Is is they're eating? Is they're is they're preparing for what is to come? Um, the the battle that is to come is one in our preparation today. And what do we do? We we went to oh, I never saw that coming. You know, I need to get in the word. And, you know, what does the Bible say about this? You know, wouldn't it be great if we already knew? Wouldn't it? Thank you. You've been given those tools. You've been given those weapons. And my question this morning is, are you taking advantage of them? Are you putting on the whole armor of God? Are you being honest with yourself about what your Achilles heel is? Are you asking others to pray that you might be able to fight the good fight? Are you praying uh, that others might be able to go through the battles of their life and find themselves still standing? My prayer is that when we show up for picture day, because we're going to take it of this masterpiece, right? this masterpiece in progress, My prayer is that when you show up for picture day, uh, so that we can see that masterpiece uh, unveiled for you and others to be able to see, I want to see you wearing the right outfit. I want you to be completely clothed with, with the thing that's needed, fully fit for winning. So that Christ's glory might be seen. So it might be known not only, not only here locally but, but even beyond that. Because it is only through this completeness that we're able to fully understand and appreciate the reconciliation that he's providing us. to uh, The way that he's bringing us back into relationship with himself. And also, and that's through his son Jesus Christ. And then also in the way that our relationships with others are being Reconcile. I can see the masterpiece that's in front of me, and I hope that you do too. Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. What a beautiful, beautiful uh, creation uh, I see in front of me. Each and every one of these individuals, and uh, whether they be in it right here or whether they be online, you are a masterpiece. We see what it is that God is doing in and through. No, are we made perfect yet? No, but we're going to keep putting on uh, whatever we need to so that we can be made whole, so that we can finally become that which we were already created to be. Father, there are so many of us that have been, uh, we feel that have been knocked out of the battle. Help us to get back up and to stand so that ultimately uh, we can be, be counted as that, that faithful one. The one that, that stayed with you no matter what was going on in our lives. And as, as Father, I ask that as a church family that, that we come and we surround one another just, just as Paul told uh, Tychicus is to, to make sure and tell tell them, you know, to build them up, to encourage one another. Let us be those people of encouragement. To, yes, it's easy here. If we're honest with one another to share what our concerns are, help us to have the courage to be able to, to say, this is an area where I'm struggling, and to trust those around us enough to, to come in and, and help pray for us so that we might be strengthened so that, so that your story might be told so that we can leave leave from this place uh, wearing those shoes of peace the shoes of the gospel so that others might be able to come into your fold and and that masterpiece your kingdom right here get more clear and more beautiful and beautiful so that as people look at it they're not looking at ooing and ah over us but rather ooing and ah over the master the one that made it all possible Father, through all of this, this past, the, the, we've gotten into your word and we've heard and we've listened to what it is that, that Paul had to say as he shared your, what was on your heart. Help us to be those people that can stand and deliver when we need to. 
Father, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise because you are worthy. We pray these things in the blessed and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Our altar's open this morning. If if somewhere during this nine-week deal, uh, God spoke to you, and there's something that, that you need to lay down at the altar, you can come up here, and uh, we're not going to mess with you unless you want to be messed with. Uh, if you need uh, assistance as you're praying, an uplifting hand, and, and someone will come and pray with you. Okay, uh, You can do it right from where you're seated if, if you're more comfortable there, but God's not calling you to be comfortable. He's wanting you to come and do what it, whatever it is that He's calling you to do. Uh, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I'd love to talk to you this morning uh, or uh, during the week. You know how to get a hold of me, and we would love to follow up uh, with uh, Holy Baptism. Um, and we can, we can get that scheduled. If you're part of another church, if you're part of another church and you're a member somewhere else, you've already accepted Jesus Christ. We don't have members, but we do have partners in ministry. And we would love to partner with you and have you partner with us. Karen's down here, and she'll get just some basic information from you, and, and we, can, uh, we can make that happen. We would love to make that happen. Or just whatever it is that he's dealing with you with this morning. Um, the altar's open.